Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion tutorial and today we're going to be looking at how my interpretation of the Iron Man house came together with Twin Motion. You're going to learn how to add things like foliage, water, landscape, create beautiful textures and lighting as well, do daytime and night shots, create amazing dynamic lighting and fantastic interactive weather in this wonderful tutorial. It was super fun to make and I do hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. So thanks for watching everybody and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to get all my videos as they come out. Let's enjoy the video, thanks for watching. So let's get started with this new tutorial. Now the beginning of this was I watched this video, The Iron Man House, which is actually in South Africa. And I really recommend watching it. If you like architecture, it's an amazing property. So this kind of sparked a bit of an idea that I would love to make a tutorial using twin motion of the Iron Man house for you. So I went on to uh, the SketchUp warehouse and managed to find actually this wonderful model. So I'll put the link for the model in the description so that you can follow along as well. So I'm going to get started in twin motion. The very first thing I'm going to do is open up the day and night template and you'll see why a bit later in the video. Um, so let's go ahead and import the Iron Man uh, SketchUp model. So we'll click and import. Note that with SketchUp or twin motion rather, you can actually import a really, really wide range of file types. And actually, if you are a SketchUp user, make sure you check out my other video where I focus on transmuter to help you uh, import different models into SketchUp. Okay, great. So here we go. We've already imported this model. Let's have a little walk around. Um, you can see it looks pretty good already. Uh, it's fairly basic in terms of the textures and we just need to do a little bit of cleaning up and we're there. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is just go into my uh, materials for the ground and landscape and I'm just gonna kind of basically favor a few of the ones that I think are gonna work quite well for this model. Now this is actually a really, really good tip. Rather than sort of trying to drag them on and try them all, uh, just sort of create a bunch of favorites of the different materials that you like and then that makes it much faster to access them when you need them. Okay, so we've dropped in a, a landscape and I've gone for the rocky landscape simply because, you know, I kind of feel like that would be the right kind of context for this kind of villa. And you'll notice that I've actually got the starting ground, which I'm now going to move down. And of course, this will make a fantastic body of water. So honestly, within a couple of clicks, adding a landscape and some water, we've already begun to transform our scene. So next up, I'm going to select the landscape and you'll notice that I've got the sculpting brush. So basically what I can do here is basically use the painting mode with different sort of diameters and intensities of my brush to basically uh, sculpt the landscape around the property a bit better. So this is a really, really lovely tool and I really love this in Twin Motion. I find it so fluid and um, it's really, really fun. It's kind of a bit like 3D photoshopping in 3D in a way. And don't worry if you kind of overspray a bit because you can easily just change the mode to things like the flatten tool and just sort of flatten down those areas that you kind of went a bit overboard. So we're already gonna make a bit of progress. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my model. Um, and obviously don't forget to save as you go through with Twin Motion. So regular saving is important. Now you've got to have a half decent computer for twin motion but as you can see I'm getting a really really pretty good frame rate and basically I'm able to kind of really fluidly sculpt this uh, rather complicated landscape um, just using the different brushes that I'm able to use and honestly this is I think on one of the nicest sort of aspects of twin motion um, if you do need to kind of create freeform landscape it just works extremely well now as well as actually sculpting we can do some painting on the landscape as well but let's just focus on uh, finishing this off so what we're going to do now actually is start adding some um, foliage so we're going to go to the populate panel and basically click on populate you notice that I'm just dragging down a few of these favorited trees into the drop box so we can also select the paintbrush and literally start painting almost instant forest. Now, depending on the size and the diameter of the brush, you can see I can actually paint literally hundreds of trees very, very rapidly. Um, I also decided I want to sculpt in some nice islands into the um, sort of lake here and also kind of bank up the lake, just make it a bit more interesting in terms of backdrop as well. So at this stage, I always recommend, you know, when you're sort of doing this kind of work, you're thinking about the views that you might want to create because there's not much point in doing loads of work on an area, you know, for a view that you're not going to see. 
So I've already got a few views in mind, okay? And you'll be, you know, obviously making a slightly different interpretation of your own model. So just sort of begin to think about those views before you kind of like progress loads of work in areas that you're not gonna see. So already it's looking really interesting. And all I've really done is added the water, the landscape, and the basically the background trees. So one of the other really nice things about the populate panel isn't just for foliage. We can actually drag in um, some of the really cool rocks that Twin Motion gives us as well. And you notice, honestly, I'm just spraying a sort of light, nice sort of rocky uh, front to the building here. And this, you know, really, really adds a lot of detail because these rocks are much more detailed than the landscape rocks. Now we can also place individual ones just by dragging those in as well. But it's nothing like actually using the uh, paintbrush to kind of paint those in super quick. So I think I'm gonna try out a few different materials um, on the concrete here. Um, I know it was sort of like a white render before, but I fancy making it a bit more brutalist with some nice sort of rough concrete. I'm not quite happy with that. So um, I'm just gonna bring this in and do a little bit of an adjustment, introduce a bit of grunge. So I just wanted something that kind of blends a bit more into the rock. Now I'm just searching for a few different sort of times of day just for my kind of starter. Um, and this is really so that I can actually begin to set up my first batch of images. Now you'll notice if I go down now to the media doc, uh, the real beauty of the days and night skies template comes to fruition. So here we can see these amazing templates that I can access. And basically I can click on those, go then to navigate through to a slightly different view, and all I need to do is basically click update on that original uh, sort of template sort of sky and everything that came in. So I've decided over here, um, basically there's way too many sort of trees involved. So all I need to do there is just get my deletion tool and basically I can start deleting to free up just so I've got a nice little view of the building coming through. Now I'm not that happy with the lighting so I want to search for the best lighting. One of the easiest ways to do this is to rotate the HDRI and a lot of the uh, scenes that come in the template with the days and night skies are all lit with HDRIs. Now you can always turn those off and go back to regular lighting, uh, but actually the HDRI does give a very nice quality of lighting out the box. And also things like reflections and the sky and the kind of clouds you get as well. So we're just sort of going around and searching for the nicest views that we can use. And the great thing with Twinmotion is we can just at any point um, upgrade those images to 8K or 4K. I normally render at sort of 4K when I'm working. And we're going to basically now have a look at setting up more of a night shot. So, okay, you can just about see the building in there looking quite nice. I'm going to move that image forward and change the resolution to uh, 4K. And now the real magic happens once I start to introduce a couple of lights in the scene. So now I'm outside again, you can see if I pop up in my media preview down in the bottom right corner, then I can actually see what's going on on that particular image while I'm working in the wider scene. So this means that I can kind of drag in things like these lights, uh, move them around. And uh, I know you can't see this as clearly as I can, but just look down into that media preview image and you should see that coming alive with the different sort of lighting. Um, now you can even unpark that media preview and put it on a bigger screen and also make it better quality and a, and a lot larger as well. But this looks really, really good already, just sort of bringing it together with a few simple lights. These are just Omni lights. And one word of warning, um, you don't always need to put shadows on. Sometimes actually it's just night to get light coming into the scene and the sort of harshness of shadows can actually make uh, the image look a bit stranger. So I'm just seeing if we can kind of get a bit more light down on the front of the scene here. Um, and just sort of having a play with the different levels and things like the characteristics as well. Now do remember sometimes you want these to be instances and other times you want them to be individual so that you can make local adjustments to the light. So you can always right click on the lights and basically break the instance as well. So this scene's looking uh, pretty nice already. I'm fairly happy with the, the new visual as it's coming together. So now what we're gonna do is just group all of those lights in a nice convenient folder so that we can turn them all on and off together. Okay, so next up, I think I'm just gonna go through and do some final tweaking and adjustments on both the rotation of the HDRI, but also the intensity value. Now this particular one, you can see, has an absolutely <laughs> massive moon in. Um, so I can't really adjust that because it's part of the HDRI, but what I can do is actually adjust all the other parameters, things like auto exposure, uh, weather and things as well. Now actually that looks really, really nice. So I've just kind of switched over to more of a wintry view. 
What Twinmotion has immediately done is added um, absolutely tons of sort of snow and ice onto the kind of rocks and things like that. And, you know, I can just really kind of finish off this atmospheric shot by adding a little bit of uh, sort of fog or ground fog, if you like. So there's two types of fog. We've got the um, small fog and we've got the kind of ground fog as well. You know, this would often be the case. I think maybe the lake would sort of giving off a bit of water vapor and it looks really, really nice. So those sort of built in particle effects are something I love Twin Motion for. So as you can see, I'm just sort of exploring a few of the different HDRI views. Um, and sometimes you've just got to kind of run through them to explore them before you maybe you rule them out and see if they're right or not. Now this maybe has potential, uh, but it definitely needs a bit of tweaking on the lighting. So we'll kind of update that view and we'll pile it up to the top there so it's one of our new ones. It's always good to try the path tracing as well uh, and just sort of see whether the image improves or is actually, you know, not really much different. Sometimes I find with path tracing, the image is dramatically different and other times, actually, the lumen is honestly just as good, if not better, than path tracing. So I'm going to review some of these other views and I'm pretty happy with these night shots, particularly with this lovely snow on the ground. Um, I'm not too pleased with the internals right now. So you know what, I'm going to decide to focus on exterior visualization for the rest of this tutorial. Maybe what I'll do is actually come back and look at the interiors in a completely separate video for you. I think that would be quite a good one. Otherwise, it's going to be too much to pack in today. Okay, so. Now I'm basically got my view set up. I've got the main sort of background and I'm really going to focus on adding a bit more detail to the scene. So one of the ways I'm going to do this, of course, is to add a little bit more planting uh, using this wonderful foliage sort of painting tool. And you know, you can see how quick this is. I can basically select a bunch of plants and just sort of place those uh, locally. I can also just drag them in, you know, individually and duplicate them around if I want to be a bit more careful with the placement as well. The thing about the foliage paint tool is not actually that precise, but the fact is it's very, very rapid. And the thing is you can kind of change the density and grow them and just sort of keep going back to it and kind of adding more detail as well. So, you know, it's super quick for this kind of uh, work where you just want to add sort of fairly sort of non, you know, non sort of thought about detail, just something in the background that looks really, really cool. Okay, great. So we're looking good. Um, we've already added lots of nice detail around the main area of the scene. Let's just sort of fo focus in a bit more and we'll just add a little bit more planting over here. And also I think kind of needs a bit more uh, around these side bits as well. So, you know, the good thing is with Twin Motion, what you'll find is once you start to actually set the views up that you're really going to be using, you can then decide whether to add a bit more detail or not. Okay, so let's have a quick review of some of our images. Um, keep saving as you go, of course. Um, I found Twinmotion very reliable at the moment and I didn't get one crash at all in the course of this project. But I have got a pretty good machine with a 2080 Ti graphics card. Um, and that was from a few years ago, to be honest. So, you know, there's much better graphics cards available now. Uh, but even that graphics card performs really, really well and it's a good three or four years old. So just make sure you have a decent setup to get the best from Twinmotion if you can. Okay, so we've done a bit more organizing and I'm really sort of quite pleased with this particular view and I really want to uh, focus on making this work a bit better. So I'm just gonna explore what it would be like in sort of the winter um, or the different sort of times of day, sort of rainy or post rain. Um, I have to say the snow and the kind of wintry conditions always look pretty amazing in twin motion. And I think that works really, really well with this mountainous backdrop and these kind of lovely HDRIs as well. So, you know, look, on real projects, obviously you have to be a little bit more uh, selective about your weather and the views and things like the HDRIs. The great thing about learning on fancy projects like this, you know, the Iron Man house, is you really can do what you want and just have a lot of fun. And honestly, you know, having done this for um, quite a few years now, I've really enjoyed making videos like this. I find it a fantastic way to learn and you just kind of let your creative juices flow and basically uh, just enjoy sort of learning as much about twin motion as you can. Now, the great thing about this is when you come to do real things, you actually have these skills in place. Okay, so let's go back to the image. Uh, what am I doing now? I'm basically doing some uh, vignetting. You can see I'm also playing around with things like the sharpness and the new setting is called chromatic aberration, which just came in in a recent update as well. 
My tip would be to don't overdo chromatic aberration. Um, it makes the image slightly sort of three-dimensional almost. It gives a slight sort of camera effect, but it can look a bit strange, almost a little bit blurry as you can see on screen. So I tend to prefer to increase the sharpness a bit. And actually with that, it's better to reduce the chromatic aberration right down. Now don't forget that you can also uh, put the composition overlays on to get those nice grids. So this is sort of the equivalent to a photographer you know, tuning up the image a bit. Um, let's do a bit more tweaking on things like the vignetting and the brightness for this particular image. You can see it really is quite infinite the amount of control that Twin Motion gives you these days over your image. Things like you know the exposure and the gamma, all these things are up for grabs as well. Um, but the real key thing, the biggest thing, is just search for the best time of day and the best lighting. And do also bear in mind that when you do click the path tracing button, and the image will also look a little bit different to how it does with Lumen, just because of the nature of the lighting. So if you are doing a uh, sort of in separate image for the um, path tracing, I'd recommend you duplicate it like I've just done. Then you can have one of each, you know, one with Lumen and one with path trace settings as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and work on these night shots now. So what I like to do is basically almost set up all of my views or shots, if you like. Uh, basically move around and just sort of work on those a few at a time. And then once I've rendered these initial ones out, I will probably choose my favourite few and then go back to Twin Motion and work on them in a bit more detail as well. So I like to kind of move around the views in a sort of prioritised order just to get a big, bit of a feel for those as well. Um, this night shot looks really, really nice actually, but you know, I think I'm just going to play around with things like the focal length. Um, and you can see that we can really zoom in to that view, and that looks nice just with a bit of water there. I think the key with Twin Motion is you've got to learn to be self critical. Um, so, over the years, I've learned to, um, you know, be quite self critical of my images and just keep working to try and improve them. You know, the lighting is probably one of the hardest things to learn. Um, so do, you know, do take your time and just try out different things like a photographer would with different sort of levels of intensity. And just keep searching for that perfect lighting. Um, there's so many different options with the rotation of the HDRI that in a way, sometimes it feels a bit bewildering because it's infinite. But, you know, with a little bit of experience and practice, I think you'll find what works for you. Um, and you can see that this image now is really starting to come together. You know, I really, really like the, the water there and the reflections of that water with the HDRI and that lovely movement we're getting. We've got the nice lighting in the building. Uh, we've got that mist sort of rising over the horizon as well. And basically, we're just using things like exposure. We're able just to tune up that brightness a little bit. And maybe, maybe the intensity of the HDRI. Again, a little bit more searching for the optimum condition. But as I say, the very best way to do this is duplicate the images so that you can always go back to the Im original image if you mess things up. Um, it's a really, really nice way to work. Okay, so we're almost there with our images. We're just doing these final tweaks on this first little set of images. And do bear in mind, you know, this preview I'm seeing on screen um, is really, really great actually with Twin Motion. But, you know, once you do your final renders, you'll be pretty blown away by the level of quality. And of course, uh, hang around to the end of the video. I'll review all the final images that I rendered out during this part of the video. Now, I'm also planning to make another video on this at some point on how to create the video side of things. So do make sure you definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed already and put the bell on so that you don't miss that. Okay, so we're going to render out all of those images in one single batch. And let's now, as ever, review our wonderful images that we created in this Iron Man Twin Motion tutorial. So once again, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I've really hoped you've enjoyed this video and it's just been great fun to make for you. I'll be doing loads more of these, so I'll look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Take care. Bye-bye.